Ella's just making me a nice green juice. Yeah, hello. Amazing. Here you go. Ta. Is there alcohol in this? No. No alcohol in this. Would you like some? No. I'm all right, Ta. Okay. Look at this set. Is this what you were doing last night, Dungeons and Dragons? Um, yeah, I played D&D right here last night. Mm -hmm. um, and then my uh, business partner was here earlier. We were trying to run some TikTok ads. For your stuff? Yeah, so we're starting an e-commerce store. Um, we're going to be selling this light and these lights initially. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, you mentioned e-commerce, yeah. You didn't say the product, so... Oh, yeah. You said testing different products to see if they work as drop shipping stuff. Yeah, exactly. Through this thing. And what's this light? Is this like a... It's just a really cool LED light. It folds up. It's bloody bright. Yeah. And it screws into like any regular like outlet or like lamp. And how much can they sell for? Don't have to tell me the other prices. I don't remember how much they're selling it for. It looks cool for f any sort of filmmaking. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going to touch on my makeup. It's very... You can do your makeup. Very on brand. <laughs> oh, do you want a tour? Let me take you around. Yeah, do that. Okay. I'm recording your audio so you can like talk whatever room you're in. Okay. Cool ass shower curtain. <laughs> the shower, the best shower curtain I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is not tidy, but whatever. This is quite tidy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Look at the floor. There's floor space. <laughs> this just in case. <laughs> Uh, it's actually part of my costume for my D&D character. We dressed up as our characters for Halloween, so that Amazing. was, yeah. And for our next campaign, I ordered this, like, months ago. It just came. <laughs> Isn't it cool? It looks cool. God, I love all the art and stuff you've got everywhere as well. <coughs> Thank you. God, I bet everything's got a story. Yeah. My pornography awards. <laughs> um, the shrine to my late dog. Ah, the dog, the yeah. Gonzo dog. Gonzo, yeah. Okay, that we can tell me about that in a minute. Yeah, I'll tell you all about it. We've got the bondage Barbies. The who? Bondage Barbies. Oh, okay. <laughs> the bondage Barbies. Yeah, yeah, as you do. As you do. Yeah. Thanks for letting me come to film stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Um, Wicked. Yeah. I can see some sort of 360 camera. Yeah. Was this the same place that you had the Gonzo walking around? No, that was in Los Angeles. Ah, okay. Um. When you're playing, when you said you were playing last night, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Is it keyboard and mouse? Um, or VR or what? It's... Uh, I'll have my laptop right here, and I have a little mouse setup so I can go back and forth between different tabs. But we stream it on Twitch, so we're all like um, talking to each other through Skype. Um, we're on Twitch, and then we use something called D&D Beyond to like keep track of our characters and roll dice. And then there's a map tab that shows like whatever space we're in. So, yeah, so you stream it and you save it on Twitch. The whole thing's live as well as saved. Yeah. Yeah. And have you, does it, is it monetized then? It makes, it's... Um, I think the channel is monetized, but we don't, like, I'm not playing it for money, I'm just playing to have fun. You're playing it because you like it? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. I've been playing D&D since I was, like, 12. Um, but after I moved here, I didn't have, a, like, a campaign or, like, a group to play with anymore. And so one day my attorney hit me up, and I'm like, oh, shit, oh, shit, what's, what's wrong, what happened? <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm putting together a D&D group on Twitch. I don't want it to be all, like, ladies and just my friends. So do you want to join? And I was like, don't fucking scare me like that again. <laughs> yes, of course I want to play D&D. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, you've definitely liked, always liked playing that game then. Mm -hmm. You play other games as well? Um, I played other tabletop RPGs like that. Um, Shadowrun. Uh, my friend Zach made one called, uh, oh, shit, I'm such an asshole. I forgot what it was called. Well, Demon City. Um, so we like play tested that one. Mm -hmm. um, you know when you gave the tester suit guys the rundown, the chat? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I have to cut that bit out as well. Um, to give us that bit. You know, when you okay. gave him the real brief, you gave me a bit more in-depth chat in the bar, yeah. which was great because I got to hear more stories. But then you did like a spiel, which I know you've done before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll do it here on the end. Yeah, but I wanted to capture it because it was a good chat. You've got a nice business card there of mine. Yeah, it's a great one. I met that guy. <laughs> um, okay, so... Because I like the story from right at the start, mm -hmm. um, if you could just tell us that bit so yeah, that everyone knows. Start from... Librarian. Librarian, or okay. Um, so I got my master's degree in library and information science, and my undergraduate degree was in uh, forensic psychology. So I finished grad school when I was 21, I became the associate director of the library just outside of Boston and head of reference and just kind of a lot of things. It was a very small library. So uh, yeah, I was doing that for like a year and um, I've been modeling since I was 18. And I had recently gotten out of a relationship and I had, there was some dude who was like threatening to post naked photos of me somewhere and I was like, fuck you. I had already been thinking about trying out some adult industry stuff just because I had really negative views on it and I wanted to sort of like question my own beliefs because I work in the information field so you know so anyway I saw this listing on Craigslist for like hardcore bondage but it was like fully clothed so I was like okay I'm gonna dip my toes and see how this is and see how uncomfortable I am and I expected to be like just really uh really uncomfortable you know um but it ended up being such a great day on set I felt so respected I made more money in an hour than I made in a day at the job that I had to have a master's degree to do and um, it was just really fun. So I started doing a few other little like fetish shoots and I did my first uh, official nude photo shoot with the person who would eventually become my ex-husband. <laughs> um, and I, I was just like, look, if this guy's threatening to put naked photos of me on the internet, you can't let the cat out of the bag twice. So I'm gonna do it on my terms and make money from it and he can go fuck himself. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, so at that point it was like, okay, I'm doing the fetish stuff. I've done some nude photography. It's basically porn and I'm having a lot of fun and I'm making money and if I can make money here you know in like Boston Massachusetts then what if I just moved to Los Angeles where the person who would eventually become my ex-husband was already living and uh, yeah so basically he did that shoot and three months later I was living in Los Angeles doing porn and married so that was a big step then yeah a little I, I life change <laughs> impulse control issues maybe <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I started doing porn back when I was 23. I did girl girl, just lesbian porn for the first several years, and um, I was in a position where I wanted to start a cinematic lesbian porn company with my friend Will at the time. And my husband basically told me that he thought that like he had to start the company for me, or else like he didn't think I could do it myself. And I was like, okay. Around that time, I'm dicking around on Reddit one day, right? And I see someone post about how they want to do. VR porn, but they don't know how to find porn stars. And at this point, I already knew VR is going to be amazing. Um, it's going to be great for porn. Um, my view on technology is how can I fuck with it or how can people watch me fuck with it? Um, very clear answer in this case. Um, and so I saw that post and I was like, hell yeah, I'm a porn star. I want to do this. And uh, about a month later, I was flown out to the East Coast and I was at a train station waiting to meet up with this VR pornogra pornographer person. And I'm looking around this train station, there's like a lady with a stroller, there's like some dudes in suits from, you know, the government or whatever worked on Capitol Hill, and some teenager. I'm like, should I get stood up by this pornographer? Where is he? And the teenager comes over and he's like, hey, are you Ella? And I'm like, hey, are you an adult? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was 20, so not a teenager, so, you know, upline. But um, yeah, so we're like on the train to go and shoot, right? And I asked him, is it... And this was the guy? This was the guy yeah, you were supposed to be it. meeting? This is the person who's now ex-roommate, former business partner, best friend, like, really, really cool dude. Cool. So, anyway, we're on the train, and I'm like, so are we shooting at a studio, or is it, like, someone's apartment? Because, you know, we shoot out of each other's houses all the time in porn. Um, we don't really... We don't pay much attention to film permits. So don't much. need a set. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's my apartment. I was like, okay, cool. And we get there, and it is his dorm room. And his... <laughs> roommates are playing Dungeons and Dragons in the living room and I roll in, you know, a porn star from Los Angeles. I dress like a toddler with very permissive parents. I'm wearing like squid tentacle leggings, cowboy boots, like a skeleton hoodie, and these are all like just polos 
for polos and khakis, as far as the eye could see. <laughs> and um, they had no idea that he was flying at this porn star to shoot porn or anything. So they looked at me like I was fucking insane. I was just like, hey, so what do you guys, what position you guys playing? I see you're in the half elf ranger. <laughs> What's up? And they were not interested in engaging with me about Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons, so that was cool. So I go back to his bedroom, uh, drop off my stuff, because that's where we're going to be filming. And I come back out like a minute or two later, ghost town. They are gone. I was like, dude, did you guys even, I don't know, did you did you level up? Did you distribute XP? Like, okay. We'll schedule. <laughs> um, so anyway, we, we do the shoot in his room. He sets up this 180 degree. It's two um, GoPros hmm. on a really janky little metal or a little wooden mount. And he's like, okay, so this is 180 degrees VR. Nobody else can be in the room with you because it's going to capture the whole room. So, like, we can't, like, direct you. So just get in there and make a porno. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And I did. And uh, it was really cool. It was the first time I actually didn't cringe watching my own content. And it felt transportative and immersive and intimate and all of the words that we always use to describe VR forever. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and, yeah, then I flew home. And he, not too long after, asked if I wanted to be his business partner. And... I was really psyched because this 20-year-old kid saw potential in me as a business partner when my own husband didn't think I could start a fucking porn company after, you know, I am a pornographer already, so. <laughs> Halfway there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> that's how we started. Our company was called VRTube.xxx. Mm -hmm. We started off doing the 180 3D, then we did 360 3D. So yeah. I made this camera mount for 12 GoPros. It's foam board and a gummy bear duct tape, this little mount. It's such a good thing to keep. Yeah, and uh, we, I just strapped in the GoPros with rubber bands, and um, <sighs> it was a bitch. It yeah. was a bitch back in the day. I know. I didn't ever do that many cameras, but I know the process of stitching stuff together and all that. God, it sucks. So, yeah, we did that, but it was like, okay, we're two people, and we're getting into this business like very early on i think there was maybe one other vr porn company at the time mm. but eventually other people with a lot of money are going to come into this space and we need to find a defensible position you know as a company mm. so then we used a microsoft connect to shoot um uh like point cloud basically yeah, depth depth yeah, yeah depth, depth camera, camera stuff yeah so it was a volumetric i guess yeah volumetric but yeah. like from one side yeah um and so I made 3D, like, holographic porn. I just, like, isolate the performer's body and space on three axes with software and place them into a digitally rendered environment. Um, and that sort of stuff's ahead of its time, especially <laughs> back then. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem, because it was all ahead of its time, and we were putting stuff out when the only headsets in the, you know, populace were uh, developers' kits. Yeah, so this is DK1, DK2 This stuff. was DK2 days, yeah. Um, and then I used that tech to make a dating simulator. So it's like you're in this cafe and it's rainy outside and I'm in front of you. And I introduce myself and then you have some options to how you want to respond. And we don't show the user this, but each of those responses has a point value associated with it. And so if you're nice to me and we build a rapport, then at one point you pass a threshold where you can say something like sexy to me and it'll have a positive outcome. Whereas if you're too forward, too fast, you never get there. Gone. Yeah, yeah so you never like get to that point. Behavioral learning. <laughs> um, if you if your headset sort of dipped down uh, instead of my tits, I'd totally call you out for it. <laughs> um, and it was programmed in, like if head movement moves down, then play this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so playing that, it was kind of silly, but it felt like you were kind of talking to a real person in VR. No. Yeah. It's like it's the steps that we need to get past to be able to get to the other stuff, which is a full interactive chat with someone. Exactly. Eventually. Um, so um, that bit led into what did that bit lead into? Then we uh, we made the first ever live VR webcam platform. So the um, one that you spoke about was on Steam. Y um, it eventually rolled into that, okay. but it was adult, so it wasn't on Steam initially. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, we had two sort of versions of it. One we just used like a green screen, which looked really janky, and if I wore like green lingerie or if like my eyes read as too green I, they would get chroma keyed out and i looked like a hell beast oh shit go see through <laughs> yeah <laughs> which that's my fetish but <laughs> kind of niche. see through eyes <laughs> hell beast oh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so then we uh we patented this process of um basically we put our camera which looks ah, something like so this is a 
different thing, but oh, okay, yeah. this right here, this part, that was the camera that we built. Okay. Um, and then I would build binaural microphones for it. Um, yeah, this is the stuff that fascinated me when we had the chat the other day. Yeah. Because, yes, you can talk about porn industry and VR and those things, but then that sort of technical stuff, I was like, okay, carry on talking. <laughs> I don't normally hear this sort of stuff coming out of a woman's mouth, <laughs> let alone a porn star's mouth, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that was the things that I like, okay, that was fascinating. Hang on, just one second, let me make sure this isn't something I need to care about. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we uh, put the camera on like a motor and would do like a 360 rotation and take small little snippets of photos and then stitch them together into a photosphere. So it's a 3D 360 still image. Yeah. And we would put the video, like layer it on top. Okay, so, so you look around, you feel like you're in this 3D space because there's a different image in each eye, mm -hmm. but then you would do... But I'm just going to stand it in my head. Yeah, we're only streaming two cameras worth of data instead of 12. So it felt like it was live 3D, 360, oh, but it was shit. really 180. And what was the video that was playing? Um, that would be girls' web camera. Um, and it was like a 2D? 3D. So this was a 3D as well as the environment that you're in? Yeah. Ah, okay. It was on top of, it was overlaid on top of yeah. the 3D image? Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's you weren't having seamless. to use, yeah, you won't have to use all of the thing for 3D video, frame by frame. Yeah, exactly. Most of it was still. Exactly. Because if you're watching a cam girl, like, I'm not dancing around the camera. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting on my bed. Yeah. Um, In front of you normally. That's why there's not always that need to go around, is there? Mm -mm. Was that, there was no need to spin around? Yeah, I mean, you could look behind you and you'd see my bedroom. But mostly the action. Is ah, but that's just you. giving people more intimacy. Feel like they're there. Yeah, because they'd look around my room. I mean, look around my apartment. You mm. see, like, it tells the story of who I am before I even say anything about myself. Yes. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and if you'll let me in a minute, mm -hmm. I'll shoot a couple of 3D 180 video clips on that other camera. Yes. So that people can watch this, but then also just step into here. Yeah. For that a couple cool. of bits. Um. So we licensed that to a site called Cam4 for a couple of years. And then when that license expired, we decided to close that company and start a new one that's non-adult, that's more mainstream. Mm -hmm. And that one was called Gonzo VR. It was named after my dog, Gonzo. Thank you very much. He's in my necklace. Um, and so, yeah, we called it Gonzo VR because kind of like Gonzo journalism, you're like in, like into the thick of everything. Mm -hmm. But also because we put a VR camera on an RC car that I built. So I basically learned how to code and build Arduino, like circuit boards and stuff, for Gonzo VR. So this was live in my apartment, in my living room, 24 hours a day, people could come in, in VR and drive around my living room, and they could uh, buy treats for my dog. These are the little pieces of that thing that you've kept. Yeah, so this would, in VR, uh, you would see something overlaid that says, like, buy Gonzo a treat, and so someone would pay $5 in Steam, and then this little motor would activate, and it would twist this, and treats would come out. <laughs> uh, it's very janky. This is a, a CD that I scraped the cover off of. Yeah, but people were paying to feed your dog a treat. Yeah. Exactly. Via a headset and VR linked up to a camera. Yeah. People 3D. From, people from all over the world would like buy treats for my dog. Um, I also made some other little robots like. Um, this and I one. guess this thing's still on Steam. It's still um, there on Steam, but it's not being used. I think the page is still active, but the, the yeah. servers are down. There's nothing really to do with it. Okay. I made this so that people could uh, operate this in VR and slap my business partner with a fly swatter. So whenever, was that a pay, pay per slap as well? No, that was just for fun. <laughs> um, I made a, so I got an, an XY plotter, which is like this device that has like two, it's like a grid basically. You can control like a pen. You basically upload like, a, like an image and it'll sketch out that image. Mm -hmm. But I reprogrammed it so that people could uh, control it using their controllers and like draw collaboratively in VR. So. What year was that? This was 2018, I think, 2019. Yeah. Um, so obviously people drew dicks. <laughs> Everyone, whenever <laughs> they get Someone would draw a pencil something. or you have a new iPad or anything with a pencil, men or men, women mainly draw cocks. Yeah, you're gonna draw dicks. Of course you are. Mm -hmm. So. But once they get past the cockpit, they can normally get think more creatively outside of that. Yeah. We see it in VR a lot. Yeah. Here's a whiteboard. Here's a pen. <laughs> Here's a dick. Go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that company, and it was really cool. I would do an, a broadcast every night in VR. Um, 
similar to the cam girl thing where we had the 360 photosphere mm -hmm. but we also had things like those little ar markers that people could have their little like avatars show up yeah. next to me um yeah, it was yeah. really fun we are uh, like people wrote songs about us um our community is still active on discord even though we haven't done anything in years um we made a game app that was basically uh it was called game lodge it never got off the ground but you could collaboratively build games and script them with miniscript in real time without having to like process or export any anything yeah it was really cool but that was interesting Alas. yeah no that was interesting because that's the goal for a lot of people like they want to make vr experiences and i want to be able to make vr as fast as i can make video mm -hmm. eventually um, and I think a lot of people are going to want to do that. Like you can have drag and drop website design now. Mm -hmm. Everyone can do it. Yeah. It's going to be the same thing for VR world. You were just probably we made four it. years ahead. Yeah. And uh, we just, it was too rushed. Um, my business partner like finished the program, but I just didn't have enough time to actually form like a marketing strategy and, and execute on it. So when that didn't work out, we just sort of parted ways and we both moved to Austin. And now here I am. I work for a company called Vero Playspace, which is really cool. Um, can you give me two seconds real quick? I'm filming again. Okay. I like that headline. <laughs> so this is the company you just mentioned? Yeah, so this is one of the companies I work for now. Um, they do interactive CGI experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all DLC on Steam. Oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. You can see full screen. So you've got a full avatar version of Ella. Is it called Ella? Yeah. Um, is there other people that have their models, or is it? Yeah. So our main. That's oh, still. Virtual Ella. <laughs> Did you design her? Um. I mean. It's based on me. I didn't really design like. My I mean, did you make that, or did someone else? Or someone make else that? did, yeah. And then you approve it, or say. Yeah. A bit more here, a bit more there. Pretty whatever. much, yeah. Um. So yeah, we have Vero Playspace that has all these interactive CGI experiences. And do you go in that, or do you not go in that? Is it just an AI version of you that people can interact with, or do you go in and? Oh, it's pre-recorded. Pre-recorded. Yeah. How? Um. I did all of the motion capture stuff. Okay. Ahead of time, I recorded everything so it's this a good experience every time you watch it and is there other people doing that or is that just you on there there are a couple of others so we also have vex ruby who's our main spokesperson and she is a virtual broadcaster people often call them lewd tubers lewd tuber yeah so makes she sense kind of change my mouse settings when i play dnd this is Vex Ruby. Um, so she broadcasts uh, on a couple of porn sites. Mm -hmm. She's fully motion tracked. She's in real time. Real and time. Yeah, her face, her everything is broadcast in real time. So it's like she is actually moving around in the in the motion capture studio and what as you they're see seeing as it. As the character, yeah. But yours awesome. is pre-recorded at the moment. Yeah, but. <clears throat> We're working on releasing something where um, if I have basically just five trackers, I could use my uh, my Ella avatar and also broadcast like she does. There's a couple just of Just with Vive trackers? Yeah. Yeah, you could put pucks on your feet or yeah. whatever. Um, and then we're also working on like social spaces in VR. So um, our apps work with pretty much every haptic sex toy or haptic device in general. Um, That's mad. Yeah, so people will be able to like rent a room in VR and go and like activate each other's haptic toys together and like basically jerk each other off across distance in VR. Yeah. Someone messaged me the day and said, have you seen Demolition Man where they have like virtual sex? I'm like, yeah, it was quite a few years ago. But yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. God. Okay. Um, and then I also work for a company called Unlock, which is like a, a fan platform that it's not VR or anything, but it's still really cool. And um, I don't know. I just really like it. They're really and that's separate to this? Yeah. They're based in... Uh, so if you say about these these guys, um, we're talking about them, and yours is pre-recorded, mm -hmm. what do you have to do in terms of work? What do you mean? Um, do you, have to, you say you work for them. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I do marketing, so. Okay, so marketing for that. Yeah, I do marketing for Vero Place Space and I do marketing for Unlocked. Okay, as well as, so sending people to the site. Hi. Sending people to this, uh, to download it. Mm -hmm. Like you talked about TikTok yeah. videos and stuff like that. Oh, so that's for the dropshipping company that I'm starting with my. Uh, You've basically got about six or seven different things going on. Yeah. Yeah. And is your brain busy? Yeah, I guess so. Or does it like to be busy? Yeah, I have wicked ADHD, so it it helps if I have a lot of different things I can jump between. Yeah, 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 yeah. Focus yeah, yeah. on for a little bit. Get bored of that, go to that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I know that feeling. That's how. I mean, I got my master's degree when I was 21 because I took way too many credit hours because I would just like jump from thing to thing to thing. Otherwise, I would just get bored and not do anything. Yeah. So this is one of, this is an, it's an antique vintage vibrator. So the way it worked is you would slide your hand in here like this. Oh my God. And then. What year was this from, Ella? Um, I think it's from the 50s. So you plug it in and you turn it on. Right? Does this still plug in? Yes. Don't do it in case it electrocutes you. But no, no, no. It still works. It's just I can only run it for like a few seconds oh before no, the no. motor starts to make like no. really ozone Let's smells. <laughs> ozone bad smells. You see? No. Well. I'm, I'm doing it. You don't have to watch. <laughs> it's going to make a smell, did you say? Well, it's just like, you know when like a... Oh, like overheats, run. like a... Yeah. Don't electrocute yourself. I do what I want. I do whatever the fuck I want. Jesus. That was the first yeah. line that Ella said when she first met me. Well, I, it used to work. <laughs> Take this off. Let's see. Let's try over here in this mess of cables. If in doubt, just get a load more plugs. Yeah. I'm trying to work out which bit vibrates. It vibrates your whole hand. Oh my god. So then you would use your finger no. as a vibrator. No way. That's ridiculous. I'm going to turn it off before it. Yeah, it's a <laughs> Where did you get it from? Um, my ex husband gave it to me. Jeez. That is absolutely brutal, isn't it? It was really cool. It's cool that, well, I guess people were still thinking those sort of things <coughs> 50, 60 years ago. But um, anyway, I thought that was neat. That's a cool little thing. You definitely need to keep that. Yeah, and look. And the box. I think that company makes um, <laughs> like blenders now. Really? They moved away from like sex goods. toys. Yeah. Well, it's not a sex toy. It's a massaging device. Oh, okay. The Obviously. Sa the same as the thing that you get at CES every year. Suspended motor action gives fingertip control. Oh my God. Scientific okay. massage modality. <laughs> I need to scan the box. Soothing and invigorating. So, that's that. And I would secure them with rubber bands because I'm very high tech. Um, it cost about $12 to make and it replaced a $500 mount that we could not afford. No, 5000 Yeah. 12 bucks instead of 5k. Come on. So there's that. And then the other bit that you picked up. Actually, you've probably got two items that you can pick up. Yeah. That for Gonzo and then the other thing for... Fingerstim. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a dog treat dispenser that I made. Uh, it's just a little Arduino device, and I had it networked on a Raspberry Pi so people could buy my dog treats in VR. It is very janky, but it worked, and Gonzo loved getting treats from strangers on Steam. <laughs> um, this is a vintage antique... Um, vibrator or massage device where you slide your hand in here and it vibrates super fucking hard and it basically turns your fingers into a vibrator. It's kind of cool. I turned it on but um, I just did a little while ago and I worry that it's going to burn itself out. And if people do want to have a look at it, we can look at the 2D video where you go into a bit more depth. Yeah. Um, do you want to see the car? Yes. Oh, I didn't even tell you the name of it. Take it over there if we can, just oh. so we won't move the camera. So and this, this is from Gonzo VR. Yeah, this is from Gonzo VR. Um, there's a little 180 3D camera that we've made. Uh, little binaural microphones that I soldered together. 
a uh, little mini PC, so it was wired. I had wires like kind of up this intricate system in my living room, and people could drive around my living room in this little car. We called it Roommate, because it was our roommate, and it's a car. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it was really cool. Um, it's <laughs> This is part of a pool noodle, which kept it from like bumping into walls and fucking up the cameras. Um, the cables kept getting tangled, so I got this Slurpee straw. I just used it for cable management. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It's like the sixth iteration, but I learned how to code and build robotics with this thing. Do you think that, just quickly, do you think there's going to be a rebirth at some point with this a mixture of all this technology that's something you might do in the future? I'm sure someone will do it. I doubt it's going to be me, but that's fine. <laughs>